there. From a very angry squirrel to the greatest Easter egg book collection you will ever see. Here are 25 secrets, Easter eggs and amazing details you can find in God of War Ragnarok. I'll be sure to put anything which could be a spoiler at the end of the video, just in case you haven't finished yet. Let's start with an amazing detail. During the fight with Thor at the start of the game, Kratos does this. A sweet right to the jaw and the God of Thunder dislodges a tooth. Thor then tosses it to the ground. Take a second after the fight to find it, and look, it's still here! Amazing attention to detail, and should you come back at any point in the game, it's still here. Thor's tooth must be worth a fortune. During the boat rides and the sled trips, listen long enough and you'll hear this conversation. Brother, I've heard my share of stories about your homeland, but I'd also heard that you once fought in a tournament. I fought in many contests. But this particular one, I heard you did battle with beasts, scoundrels, princesses, the undead, automatons, and history's greatest musician. That's not... that's not true, is it? I originally thought this was a nod to the time Kratos appeared in Mortal Kombat. Finish him! But oh no, I'm totally wrong. This line is actually a nod to the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale game. Did you ever play it? Kinda like Smash Bros, but with PlayStation-renowned brawlers. Here, listen to the line again. I fought in many contests. But this particular one, I heard you did battle with beasts, scoundrels, princesses, the undead, automatons, and history's greatest musician. That's not... that's not true, is it? So, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale really happened in the life of Kratos. Wow, what law. I wonder if he really played golf too. There are points in the story that tempt us to do things we shouldn't, from eavesdropping to being the god of mischief. For example, Ratatoska, the Idrisil tree squirrel, works with us from time to time, and to get his attention, he gives us a chime placed nearby. If you're evil enough, keep hitting that chime over and over and over again, and the mild-mannered squirrel will finally lose his cool and do this. Stop with the stupid chime! Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. Loki has a few moments like this in Asgard. When asked to leave a room by Heimdall and Odin, stick around and make things uncomfortable for everyone. Maybe if we just stare at him and say nothing, he'll get the hint and leave. This gets a little weirder as when we leave, we can turn straight back around again and listen through the door. Eventually, this is said. I'm not joking, son, go. Well, now, this is just getting weird. Did you know he was this weird when you invited him? He is pretty weird. A great small detail are the cups the gang use when dining. The eagle-eyed of you will recognise these as artefacts we found in the 2018 game. We sold them to the dwarves. And now, they're in this game. It makes perfect sense that when at home, those chalices are brought out. Brilliant detail. Did you know the composer of God of War's score is in Ragnarok? Bear McCreary plays a dwarf named Rabe. He's a bard himself, and should you read his name in reverse, it's actually Bear. Brilliant, isn't it? And a fan is even given a reference too. It turns out, thanks to a Twitter conversation, that the public house in Asgard, the Black Thunder, is named in reference to a super fan and artist, Black Thunder. Pretty amazing that the devs interact with their fans in such a special way. All the way through the game, we are tasked with finding poems from Crevassia. Sell them to the dwarves when you see them on your journeys, and then keep visiting Sindri's house. The shelf at the back of the room will change. Your complete collection of books proudly on show for all. These are all Easter eggs to other PlayStation games, and some are more obvious than others, but I thought we'd make this into a game. I'll start reading the poem, I'll give you some visual clues, see if you can figure out the game before I reveal it. You ready? The poem with a USA outline is named Afterlife Abandonment. Stick, rope, tar, black. Skin, handprint, baby crying. Shower, stink, death, beach. Grubs, delicious, bomb, piss. This is, of course, a poem written about Death Stranding, a game where you can literally pee on the bad guys if you so want to. You do you. The next poem you'll get from the cover art. Eastern Spectre. The proud maple cries, a standoff makes three men fall, and the wind moves on. It's Ghost of Tsushima, a game where the wind literally guides the way. Another easy one from its cover is Tool and Bang. Steel and fur, unlikely friends, united in purpose to heroic ends. 
saving world after world with friends at their backs, two clever automatons, and the last two Lombax. It has to be Ratchet and Clank Rifts Apart. More, a book with a feather and butterfly tattoo on the cover, for the bearded cruel father and his surrogate daughter shall never know respite from a life full of slaughter. That's got to be the most loved and hated game on the PS4, The Last of Us Part 2. Another poem, horses of steel and oil and leather, brothers who fight and fall together. They rise from beneath, a new day dawns, the future has teeth and yesterday's gone. You get it? That's got to be a zombie apocalypse like no other. It's days gone. There are so many of these, I'll cover them quickly as this isn't poetry club. Recognise this image? It's the emblem for the game that needs a remake. Bloodborne. Celestial Construct has a face every PlayStation fan recognises. It's Astrobot, yet the poem is all about the PSVR game, Rescue Mission. The game which is used to create games, Dreams, is here, as too are these symbols from Aloy and the Horizon series. I'll give you a second with this one. Any guesses? It's the multiplayer game with no words. It's Journey! And looky here, a book about baseball in the Norse realm. MLB The Show is a big deal here. Nathan Drake in the Uncharted Journey has a poem too, and can any Elite fans recognise this logo? You got it? It's The Order 1886, Supernatural Werewolf Fights in Steampunk London. Not many people played that game. And the final poem has an ink smear on it, a gentle boy and his brush found kinship along the walls. A reference to Concrete Genie. There's 14 books in total, and I don't know about you, but this is the most poetry I've read in my entire life. So let's move on. Over the course of the game, Kratos begins to soften and looks at his history differently. After saving the Lingbacker, the accompanying text reads, To perform an act so heartless, it reminds me of a boat captain I wronged long ago. The boat captain is a long, long, long running easter egg in the games. That was also in the 2018 game, when we found the boat captain's remains through a treasure map. The boat captain himself was set to be saved in the original God of War from a Hydra's belly, but Kratos actually only wanted the the key in his possession and then let him die. Then later when Kratos finally died he was tossed towards hell but somehow grabs hold of the boat captain who is holding on for dear life over the river Styx. And it's not over. In God of War 2, Ulrich the Barbarian summons the dead to fight for him. And one of those is the boat captain. He runs around and doesn't fight at all. It's a little sad actually. Then in God of War 3, a little note can be found in hell handwritten by the boat captain himself. It reads, he could have saved me. He held my life in his hands and still he let go. And now in God of War Ragnarok, these memories are finally causing Kratos some thought. It reminds me of a boat captain I wronged long ago. He's not perfect, our Kratos, but he is finally realising the things he did wrong in his life and death. Usually when we finish a game story, we move on to another game. Yet with Ragnarok, there are far more things to discover after the credits roll. If you haven't finished the game, now is a good time to switch off. Have they gone? Good. Tia's hidden identity was a huge moment in the game, yet we were given a clue from the first moment we saw him. If you had subtitles on, the name Tia was spelt T-Y-R, while all other references to his name had the accent above the letter Y. This was intended to show us he was an imposter among us all along. And when the real Tia is freed at the end of the game, his name has the accented Y. A minuscule detail I don't think anyone noticed, but it's brilliant all the same. By the way, the real tier can be found in all eight realms after the game ends, so keep playing if you'd like to see everything. Such as this, should we encounter Thor's daughter after the final mission, she can be found with her father's hammer. And this happens. Wait a bloody moment, is that? Thor's hammer and his daughter. I'll make you proud, Dad. Well, good for her. And finally, should you go back to your humble home in the woods after everything you've been through, you'll find a gift from Atreus. What is it? Mementos from Atreus' journey. What will you do with it? Add it to our own. His story is ours, and ours is his. Too right, brother. Amazing touch. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam. You're awesome. See you next time. Eee, I think 
broke it. 